Welcome to another video detailing Merseyside's railway history. This time we look at the railways of Formby. The railway first came to the town of Formby in 1848, with the line being built by the Liverpool Crosby and Southport Railway. Initially it ran from East Bank Street to Southport to Waterloo, later extended to Liverpool in 1850 and Southport Chapel Street in 1851. By 1855 the line had been acquired by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. Formby's first station opened with the line in 1848, initially as Formby and Alcar. It was renamed to just Formby by 1866. A second station at Formby, Freshfield, had opened in 1854, and we'll look at that shortly. Formby station was built north of what was then a level crossing at Duke Street. This photograph shows the level crossing and the station footbridge. Looking at this map from around 1888, we see the sidings for Formby Goods Yard to the south of the station, and the Goods Yard alongside the Liverpool bound platform. The Goods siding stretching from Duke Street to Eccles Crossing. The Goods sidings are seen here, on the left, before the station was rebuilt. The second station in Formby, Freshfield, came about at the request of Thomas Fresh, a local landowner and public health pioneer, to provide him and local residents with access to the railway. Looking again at the 1888 map, we see this station also has a good yard. Also to be found just north of Freshfield was the Signal and Telecommunications Department. The building in the background is where this was based. Freshfield Goods was closed by 1968, whilst Formby's in 1960. Situated between both stations we see Barkfield siding. This was to assist with freight shunting at the two stations. Running alongside is Barkfield Avenue. Also, between the stations there were four level crossings. From Freshfield there was the still open Victoria Road crossing, then College Path crossing, Barkfield Lane crossing and Wicks Lane crossing. Two of these were later to be involved in tragic accidents. Services at both the stations were steam operated at first and the line proved to be popular. So popular in fact that capacity was becoming a problem. The forward thinking Lancashire and Yorkshire were to solve this problem by electrifying the line. The Lancashire and Yorkshire's former chief mechanical engineer John Aspinall, now promoted to general manager, saw the advantages of electrifying the whole route from Liverpool Exchange to Southport. It was to be converted to electric trains by 1904 and Formby was to play a major role in this electrification. The Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway chose the site south of Formby alongside the River Alt to build their power station. This power station will provide the 650 volts traction current not only for the Liverpool to Southport line, but power out to Orpskirk, the West Lancashire Railway as far as Crossings, and the North Mersey branch from Bootle to Aintree. This is the plan view of the power station. And these views of the power station interior show the equipment required. This is the boiler house, which housed 16 Lancashire boilers. These fed four horizontal cross compound engines of 2000 horsepower. In turn, these were coupled to four three phase 750 volt 1500 kilowatt generators. The power from the station was then fed to the substations, and these converted the 7500 AC into 650 volt DC traction current. The electrical equipment, both at the power station and on the trains themselves, was provided by Dick Kerr and Company of Preston. The trains were assembled at both Newton Heath and Horwich. A small internal railway served the power station's site and brought the coal for the power generation. For a time, the power station also had its own station, but only for the workers. The first test trains were running by late 1903, with passenger services starting in March 1904. The full rollout of the electric was to be delayed by a short time due to subsidence at the power station, but by May the conversion was complete. Services were operated by these wooden bodied electrics between Southport and Liverpool. For a short time, some lightweight trains operated a Southport to Dingle surface via the Liverpool Overhead Railway. This service ceased quite early, but it was still possible to change onto the overhead at Seaforth and Liveland. 
By July 1913, the electrification had reached its full extent, with electric trains running out to Ormskirk. It was in this period that a second railway line through Formby nearly came into being. This was known as the Lancashire and Yorkshire Formby Light Railway. Earlier in 1875, the Formby Land and Building Company had bought land at Formby, with a view to develop the area as a seaside resort to rival Southport. Included in the plans was a promenade. Little development had taken place by the 1900s, largely due to the distance from public transport. This map shows where the heart of the seaside town would have been. A short section of the promenade was actually built, along with some houses. These views of the promenade show that the shoreline was much nearer back then. The Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway, in anticipation of the plans actually getting somewhere, obtained a parliamentary act to build the line to serve this proposed resort. Leaving the main line just north of Hightown Station, this line would head west through the sand dunes in a sweeping curve and to its one station. This was to be built on or near to Alexandra Road. Another curve through the sand dunes would see the line meet up with the main one just north of Freshfield. It is interesting to speculate what Forby will be like now if these plans have succeeded. These wide, tree-lined paths would now be main roads, with shops, amusements and probably B&B accommodation. The promenade is seen here in later years, the sand dunes gradually encroaching over it. It still survives today, though now it is covered by the dunes. These steps are all that remain visible today. The whole area is now a National Trust Nature Conservation Area. Had the seaside town happened, this nature area would have been lost forever. Though we can only wonder if the newer seaside station would have become the more popular one. Formby Station was to be remodelled by 1912. The level crossing and footbridge were to be replaced by a road overbridge, with a new station booking office on the bridge, with new waiting rooms also replacing the originals. We see here this new bridge and booking hall nearing completion. Steam didn't completely disappear from the line through Formby. Interspersed with the electrics were the freight trains, but also passenger steam continued right to the end of steam on British Rail. These were the through London coaches from Southport. The early Lancashire and Yorkshire electrics were requiring replacement by the end of the 1930s, and the LMS, which had taken over the Lancashire and Yorkshire routes in 1923, introduced brand new sliding door stock between 1939 and 1941. These were to last up until 1980. In 1963, the line from Liverpool to Salport and the two stations at Formby were proposed for closure under the beaching acts. The line was to be reprieved, however. At the time, plans were in place to revitalise Merseyside railways with new underground connections. Thankfully, these plans were to come to fruition. Two of the 1939 electrics are seen here at Freshfield, now carrying the Merseyrail branding introduced in 1971. Part of the plans also called for the integration of buses and trains. In 1970, an experimental bus rail demonstration project was conducted at Formby, using buses from the Ribble Bus Company. One of these buses is seen outside Formby Station during the experiment, together with leaflets, tickets and an advertising milk bottle bib. Remember them? The current trains at the time of this video are soon to disappear from the line through Formby. The 507s and 508s that have operated for the last 40 plus years are to be replaced with brand new class 777 trains. Although the last class 502 in service ran in 1980, one was preserved and paid occasional visits to its former lines. It is seen here at Formby, running out of shuttle service, and again at Freshfield. This preserve unit is now owned by the Class 502 Preservation Trust, and is currently undergoing a major restoration of the Merseyside Transport Trust premises in Bersco. As mentioned earlier, the level crosses between Formby and Freshfield sadly have a history of accidents. 
two notable ones on the now closed occupation crossings, were to be the subject of Ministry of Transport reports. In October 1934, a train collided with a lorry on Barkfield Lane crossing. Sadly, a passenger lost his life. The passenger, who couldn't drive, was in the driver's seat and had inadvertently caused the lorry to jump forward onto the line whilst the driver was turning its starting handle. The driver denied he had been teaching the passenger to drive. A second accident occurred in 1954, with a train colliding with a car on Austin A40 on Wicks Lane crossing. The car driver was killed. Residents at the time would often use this occupation crossing rather than take the longer route to either Freshfield Crossing or form the Overbridge. One other crossing on Formby, north of Freshfield Station, also has a notorious reputation with Merseyrail drivers. Known as Fisherman's Crossing, this takes walkers to Fisherman's Path, a popular walk with the pine woods at Freshfield. Anyone using this crossing is urged to obey the warning signs and lights and never take risks with this crossing. To any enthusiasts wishing to photograph the trains, please stay well behind the gates to avoid unnecessary alarm to the train drivers. Changes continue the stations at Formby, sadly not always for the better. The timber waiting rooms and booking offices at Freshfield were to be swept away and replaced by these functional but bland modern buildings and waiting shelters. The former good yard is now partly occupied by houses. Formby fared better. Disability requirements saw the addition of passenger lifts to both platforms in 2015. The architect skillfully blending the lift house with the existing station building. Another change to the line was the loss of the mechanical signalling and the signal boxes that served them. This is Freshfield box with the preserved Class 502 running a shuttle service to Salport. This 1878 box was a Saxby and Farmer Type 9, who also provided the original frame. This was to be replaced by a railway signal company frame in 1927. The crossing gates were operated by a gate wheel in the box until 1977. This box closed in 1994. Eccles crossing box was a replacement for two earlier Saxby and Farmer boxes. This was built by the Lancashire in Yorkshire in 1912, in conjunction with the building of the road bridge at Formby Station. As well as controlling the crossing, the box also dealt with the goods yard. After closure of the Formby goods siding, the land was used as a car park. At the far end, by Eccles Crossing, a Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall was built. Formby box controlled movements on the Liverpool Bound Station goods yard. The former power station was decommissioned in 1946, but the building remained as an industrial unit until demolished in 2016. The whole site was then cleared and is now a new housing estate with names such as Tesla Way and Edison Close. Other recent changes were the alterations that were made to the height of the platforms at Formby and Freshfield to accommodate the new 77 electric trains now being introduced across Mersey Rail. The two popular stages at Formby will continue to serve residents and visitors to the beaches for many years to come. The ghost of that proposed seaside resort that would have destroyed the natural landscape is now largely forgotten. <laughs>